Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Primary Sources and Teaching Online Webinar Series brought to you by the TPS Western Region at the Metropolitan State University in Denver in partnership with the TPS Teachers Network. Uh, my name is Keith Patterson. I'm the Associate Director of the TPS Western D Region and I will be uh, hosting tonight. Um, Kyle Claybaugh and Crystal Payne will be helping in the chat. Um, please reach out to them if you have any questions or comments. And uh, as a reminder, for those of you who like professional development certificate for your participation tonight, we'll provide a link at the end to fill out a brief reflection and uh, let us know where you'd like, to, like us to send that certificate. This afternoon, our two-part program is entitled Turkeys, Chili Peppers, and Corn Analyzing an Historic Codex. And it'll be presented by a former teacher in residence from the Library of Congress and educational consultant, Sherry Galloway. And with that, Sherry, I'll hand it over to you. Great, thanks. Well, welcome everybody. Um, hopefully this, this topic isn't making you hungry um, since it's before dinner. Um, I'm curious um, how many of you were already familiar with, with this this codex that we're going to be doing or or did you think this was going to be a cooking session um i'm going to keep track of the try to keep track of the blog or the chat as, as i'm going but feel free to to um you know send comments questions and, and i'll try to react to those um as i'm going back and forth between um the session so we're we're starting um this this analysis um this is part of a lesson plan that um, is one of those lesson plans that I think gets a little buried and maybe you aren't familiar with it. So it would be fun. Um, oh, I see that we have Miss Cappy here. Um, I'm going to mention when she does this session, uh, this lesson, and she can chime in too um, on the chat. But she says, oh, my friend at the Library of Congress sent us this cool thing and we're going to do some exploring and sets up this whole scenario, which is way fun. Um, so we're going to look at this analysis or analyze this, this document, um, but not the part of the document that's the most famous. We're going to be looking at more of the nitty gritty. So we're going to take a look um, at the primary source and analyze it. Um, consider the creator of these documents and the purpose and audience of these documents. And then in part two, we're going to learn about the Library of Congress um, lesson plans. And we're also going to look at the World Digital Library and um, and look for some other similar items in the library's collections so like usual we um, use the primary source analysis tool which is observe reflect question i think probably everybody knows that um, or what do i see what do i think and what do i wonder um, if you're working with younger students so i'll be using those terms as we go along and um, you know feel free to to you know plan to enter interchange those depending on your audience that, you, that you're working with or your students. So um, also the questions of who, what, when, where, why is, is pretty obvious. Um, so this is our first page that we're going to take a look at. And um, I'll give you a minute to take um, in what all is here. What do you notice first? I think the title of our, our uh, session today maybe gives, gives away some, some hints. Um, we're seeing things in rows. We're seeing some things are in color. Um, someone's wondering if those are red peppers. Um, there's repeating symbols. And so you're, you're trying to make sense of what this is. You're trying to figure out, you know, what does it symbolize? What, what are they, the, the, creators of this document putting together. So let's start at the lower left and we'll notice that there are heads with little nobbins on the top and, and those are turkeys. So why would there be a whole row of turkeys? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven turkeys in a row and some sort of symbol underneath that. Now we see that same symbol up at the top um, with thing, different things on, on the top of that. So what, what makes sense here? What do you think is happening? Why are these, these symbols having different symbols written on the top? 
So someone says, these pictures make me want to play a game. We're looking at the geometric shapes. Oh, someone says, accounting purposes. What makes you say counting or accounting? So you must have something in your background. Okay, an inventory. Um, oh, a butcher knife. Okay, that would be fun. We could, and, and did you notice that the, the, the um, direction seems to go to the right on the top and then on the left to the bottom, but it's the same exact symbol. And then we see some other symbols that look like bundles. And these bundles, um, again, um, have a different symbol at the top. Could it stand for actually having more than one? That's a really good question. Um, what do you think those things are that are at the top of the bundles of sticks? So we see corn, sieves. Someone says it might be sieves or some sort of screening perhaps. Oh, the one question is, is it braided wheat? Um, so we have different symbols on the tops of those. Um, oh, a pineapple, okay. Um, pineapple's a, a good idea. Um, and we ha do have some background information that, that we can share, but I think it's always good to let everybody puzzle and question and, and try to make sense of things before I tell you what I do know. So what about um, the parts that look like um, circles? Any clue what that might be? I see that you're stumped. So that's, that's okay. That's something we'll put in our question that we'll wonder about and try to figure out. Okay, we're seeing wreaths grass wreaths. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a circle of some sort and it, it, we're not quite sure. Um, next to those wreaths um, in the top left corner, we see a rectangle with little lines in the middle going horizontal and, and vertical. Any clue what those might be? Bricks, a brick part of a wall, stones, um, ovens or even altars. Um, it could be adobe brick. So you have a clue that this is, is um, from a, an area that where adobe might be available. Um, I think most of our students might know what adobe is, but, but they might not. So that might be something. It could be a path. Good, good. All right. So we're having lots of ideas about what these things might be. Okay, what about those triangular brown pieces? Any clue what those might be? Some kind of container, pottery, baskets. Okay, so you're, again, you're, you're thinking, you're questioning, you're trying to make sense of it, which is what we do when we analyze something. We try to make sense, we try to look for details that, that we either connect to something that we have prior knowledge about or something that we're aware of. If it's totally obtuse and we don't have any clue, then, then that can be frustrating. So the fact that we're picking out some things. Um, someone says, I think I've seen sugar sold in cones like that. Um, so yeah, that, that's often a way that, that sugar might be available and for sale. So now we're gonna look down at the bottom and there's four different rectangles that have um, a triangle on top of those. Oh, P, P, I don't know how to pronounce that. Piloncillo, is that the name of the, the sugar cones? Good. It's always good when we have uh, lots of people sharing because we always learn something. And, and every time I've done one of these lessons, there's someone in the audience that, that has some background knowledge that, that fills in gaps for me too. So that's, I think, exciting for kids to see that you're learning at the same time that they're learning. So those rectangles down at the bottom, any clue what that might be? Again, it could be baskets. I always think they look like picture frames, but um, 
I don't, I don't know that that's very accurate. Um, a shoulder bag. Okay, good, good. All right, so we've done a lot of thinking, a lot of brainstorming. Let's go and look at the next slide. And this one is a second page. There's a total of eight pages in this codex. So this is the second page. Again, we're seeing similar symbols to what we saw in that first one. We're seeing the, the things that look like a butcher knife. Um, we're seeing what could be a bag or a butcher frame. We're seeing Adobe bricks again. We're seeing that, that wreath. We're seeing those bundles. And we're seeing some different symbols that are, are drawn on the tops of those. And then those tags that look like they have a piece of rope on them that's brown and, and hanging. Okay, we're having comments about that could be ovened. In the middle um, towards the top is one of those, those rectangles. And there's some unusual shapes in the middle of that one that we didn't see before. We're also seeing that there's turkey heads in, in frames. There's chili peppers in frames, as well as um, on the previous one, we had chili peppers at the top of the bundles. So someone's thinking that this might be a list of trade items and their value. Okay, so you're making sense of this, putting it all together. We have the, um, the screens um, in the middle and then off to the side is, is a rectangle with a line through it. Um, any clue what that might be? And then at the bottom, we have these symbols that have a diamond shape. A little different than, than the ones that are on the others that have the, the screen or the corn at the top. And I have no idea um, what those, those ones are near the, the um, just over to the right, I don't think my mouse will work, um, that looks like a, a circle with, with little things sticking out to the right and to the left. Not really sure what those are. All right, and we have one more screen that we're going to look at, or one more paper. This um, paper is mulberry paper that was made from the inner bark of the mulberry tree at the time um, in, in this part of the world. So the, the original paper um, would have been mulberry, and of course it's mounted on, a, on another piece of paper, and then the screenshot is taken. But very well-made paper that survived for, the, for this long. So again, any new symbols that we see here? We have some new colors, um, that kind of brownish color um, for the, the one section of wall and down in the lower right corner. Um, and then in the upper right corner, we have a, a lighter brown. So we're wondering about value or quality of a crop. Um, now, Cappy just wrote that she cuts them out and uses them on off-white paper and then crumples them up to make them look authentic. She does a great job of, of giving her students something that looks like it's really old and really cool, which is another great idea. Okay, so we've, we've come to some, some observations of, of the items and then we're, we're reflecting, we're thinking it's a listing, it's a, an accounting, it's a way of, of trading. Now someone said that the birds remind me of Mayan cultures. And again, you, you, you do see those um, symbols very commonly in, in Mayan cultures. So, so you don't have to struggle any longer. I'm going to take you to the to the next sec section here where we we see these turkeys, we see the chili peppers, we see the corn, and then we see these other graphic symbols that that we've we've talked about. There is some um, information that we've been able to find in other documents that talks about um, 
the um, what these symbols stand for. So we've gotten it right on those t those top three. The other ones, some of those might be be um, surprised. So someone's having a big dinner and they're going to bake seven turkeys and eight ears of corn at 600 degrees for five hours and top it with three chili peppers, which would have been appropriate for yesterday's Cinco de Mayo, right? Um, it sounds really yummy. Um, seven turkeys would be quite a few, but we might have a surprise for you. So let's take a look at the next one. These repeating symbols um, obviously represent something. And the, the representation um, which you came up with was that it was some way of counting, some way of documenting um, either a crop or um, what they produced or something that, that um, was a value. In order to take that, make the effort to keep track of this, it was, it was a value to the creator. So the purpose of the document, we had some speculation. So let me, let me take you to the next, next step. So questions, what questions do you have? We've already talked about, is it the value of a crop? Is it Mayan culture? Is this, were those triangle shaped sugar? Um, so you've had lots of questions about that. Um, why did some parts have colors and others didn't? Good question. And uh, many of these questions, obviously um, we might not have answers to, but in some cases we do have answers. So I won't torture you any longer with, with any of this, but I will tell you that the, this is called the Wado Cinco Codex. There's two ways to spell it. You'll see the red, red flag there on the map. Um, H-U-E-J-O-T-Z-I-N-G-O. And then um, some places it will have, instead of Z-I-N-G-O, it's Z-I-N-C-O. And in some places, instead of the J, it's an X. So my pronunciation that I've learned over time is Wado Cinco. Um, I'm not sure how that, whether people in Wado Cinco would know what I'm talking about if I said that, but, but that's the pronunciation um, that I use. Um, Mexico City, you can see, is, is up and to the left. So this is part of central Mexico. Um, okay, we're having questions. Well, I wonder if people in the San Luis Valley of Colorado would read this codex differently than we would hear with their cultural connections to Mexico. And very good. That would be really fun to see if any of these symbols are meaningful to them and they might have a different interpretation even with just the Library of Congress and, and the sources that I talked to there, there's multiple interpretations that I'll share with you later um, about what some of those symbols stand for. So um, it's always up to interpretation. And, and I think that makes it fun for kids to know that we don't always have all the answers and that we're constantly learning. So, um, so this is the where. Um, if we ask who, it would probably be the, the indigenous people that lived in, in Wado Cinco. Um, what it is, we still don't really know for sure. Um, when, I'm going to tell you that it was 1531, so very early on. And then the question why, we'll leave that up in the air. So, something that, some background back, vocabulary that might be helpful for your students to know is um, a tribute. What is a tribute? And those are goods given as taxes to an official. You can get into a little bit more technical details, but I think that's, that's fairly sufficient for, for most grade levels, depending on how, how old a, a student you're working with. A pictograph um, is a symbol or an image. And then we're looking at um, comparing numbering systems. So I'm giving you a little bit of a hint ahead of time. A base 10 system is 10, 20, 30. A base 20 system is 20, 40, 60. So thinking about different numbering systems and how they work is going to be helpful to us as we decipher these lessons. So I'm going to tell you, instead of having you try to make this up out of your head, is that that little symbol that we referred to as a butcher knife or I've often referred to as a flag stands for 20. The bundle of sticks 
um, is what I've referred to that one as is 400, which is mathematically in a base 20 system. How would you get to 400? So how would you calculate these totals? So the first one is 20 times one. The second one is 20 times 20. And the third symbol, the picture frame or the, or the bag is 20 times 20 times 20, which is 8,000. So now that you know this background, you could go back and look at those sheets and do some calculations. So in the lesson plan, we have created this document. Um, we didn't actually give the names of what the pictographs were because we wanted students to try to, to name them and, and make them um, meaningful to them. And then looking at that original pictograph, you could calculate what the math um, for each, how many turkeys were there. And so for each page, um, you could do the, the math to calculate them. So there's a, a worksheet here with, with the, the first page and then we go back to this. So we'll toggle back and forth. Um, so just let's just look at the chili peppers. Um, we have two of those connect or those um, bags um, or picture frames. So under chili peppers, we would put two. So how many chili peppers is that? That's your difficult math activity for the day. 8,000 times two. Anybody willing to have the answer? Okay, I know you can figure this one out in your head. Very good. Sandra wins the prize for being the first one to answer it. And all the rest of you are right too. So good job. Um, but this could be a, a way for kids to, to actually use their math skills, but combining them with these symbols and, and calculating how many turkeys were there. How many chili peppers? Oops, went the wrong way. How many ears of corn? So, so the, the computations could be there. So for the second um, page, then we have, or for each page, then we have the answer key. Now, what I've put in the answer key is what we had learned at one point about what these symbols stood for. So the first one was turkey and, and maize or corn, um, chili peppers, adobe bricks. We got to that. That circle that looked like the wreath, they refer to that as lime. So I'm assuming that's lime that would be used as a building material to mix with um, the, the mud to make the adobe bricks or, or for mortar. Those triangles that we thought were, were sugar cones um, are stones. Now, I refer to this one as the chocolate chip cookie um, because it looks like that. And in some cases they refer to that as salt. Um, I have had another, let me look at my notes and see, um, can't remember what they called that. Do, 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 do. Um, there was another presentation. Oh, and they, they said it was beans which would fit with the culture, with the foods that we're familiar with. So one entity says beans, another entity says salt. I don't know, maybe we'll check with those people um, in the uh, um, Southwest or South Central Colorado and see what they think. The, the screen um, is cloth and then the, the diamond shape is chia. So we know chia from the chia pet um, the little um, seeds. So it would take a, a great quantity of those, but then they would sprout those and eat them as, as like alfalfa sprouts or chia sprouts. And then the last one is a bowl. So we'll take a look at the, the um, background information, which is what the library had posted as part of an exhibition that's on the website, that the, the Nahua Indians of Huedo Cinco were allies of Cortez. They were unhappy that the, um, the local new Spanish government was overtaxing them. And so they went to court with Cortez's help to claim that they had been overtaxed. And these documents were used in their legal case. So they prepared a, a listing of what all they had been overtaxed. It went to court. 
Um, and in the local Mexican courts, they won. But the understanding was that then the local government said, well, it needs to be retried again in Spain. So it was sent to Spain. These documents were part of that court case. They didn't have any information on the outcome of what happened in Spain. An aside is um, one of the, the main people in the geography and map division, um, Johnny Bear, was doing research on Christopher Columbus for the um, 1992 exhibitions and found some documentation about Huero Cinco. And he found the documentation of the court case and in fact, they, they won the case in Spain and were um, ruled to return two thirds of all the tributes taken from the people. So one of the things that's interesting about this is that you can look at you know, ways to eliminate conflict, how, how to accommodate conflict, you don't necessarily have to go to war. Um, and that there was a process in, in the early 1500s for, for complaints against the government and, and how you could follow up on that. So this um, document also includes some other pages that we'll look at after we take um, our, our little short break. But any questions? I know I gave you a lot of that information at the end, and, and if you were teaching it in CAPI, you may share about how do you divulge to the, the rest of the story, but um, it, is, it is fascinating. There are some other pages that really are more famous than these pages that we focused on, but when I was at the library, um, there was an exhibition for, that's called Exploring the Early Americas, and I was asked to create lesson plans to go with that. The lesson that we did um, a couple weeks ago on the Drake maps was one of those. There's also a lesson with the um, Waltzmuller map that was the second one. And this lesson was the third. So these lessons are available on the, the teacher page and I'll actually show you how to get to those um, after we take a break. Okay, I'm seeing some comments. Um, okay, yeah, you know, my experience is always if if i tell you about it it's a whole lot you're going to be more engaged if i take you through the activity so i i like making you think and wonder instead of giving you too much information which is what we do with our students so i'm doing it the same with you you're just little little more mature students than you might use in your classroom other questions It feels like we're detectives, which is exactly what we want you to be doing, right? Um, and and anytime we're, we're reading something that we don't know, we have to be detectives and look up vocabulary. Um, anytime we're analyzing primary sources, we're, we're detectives. So that, I think that's what makes it so much fun to do with kids. So um, if there aren't any other questions, okay, let's see, wondering what kids would connect to this to in their own lives. And again, some of the examples in the lesson plan um, are to have students create um, a symbol that could represent maybe the, the ten counting by tens, counting by twenties, whatever, um, but doing some sort of inventory, um, looking at um, what's in their backpack. Do they have four pencils? Do they have ten pencils? Do they have, you know, that kind of thing. Um, even just doing inventory um, at home and, and picking something to, how many socks do you have? How many red socks? How many blue socks? Um, comments about, in school I remember creating a village culture. So looking at the village and what that might have been like, coming up with symbols. So, okay, so Keith, I think we'll let you do your, your little commercial and then we'll go to part two. Thanks Sherry, yeah, time for the commercial break in between. Um, <laughs> as a reminder, I'd just like to, um, let everybody know that we all have a professional development, professional development certificate for your participation available. Um, and the link for that, I don't know if you have that slide in there, but it's um, bit.ly slash PS teaching online, all lower cat case. Um, just go there, there's a short reflection, and then we just have you send um, where you'd like us to send that certificate to.